Hey everyone, my name is Kevin Griffin. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Today, we are going to discuss how to set up your development environment to run .NET 5. It's pretty simple. Let's get started. My expectation with this video is that you're a new .NET developer. You've never worked with it before. You probably have heard of things like C Sharp and ASP.NET and Visual Studio, but you really don't know how to put all that together. How do you set up your environment in a way where you can just jump in and start writing some code? Well, this is where you want to start. First things first, you want to go to .NET.Microsoft.com, and this is going to give you a couple different options for .NET Core versus .NET versus .NET Framework. And what's really the differences between them? So let's start over on the right side of the screen. You have the .NET Framework. This is legacy. You, if you are going into an older system that was built somewhere after the year 2000-ish, you probably would support the .NET Framework. Now, over the iterations of the language and the features and the framework, the .NET Framework has really grown into something that's pretty massive. And a couple years ago, it was completely rewritten for cross-platform, and we were introduced to this new thing called .NET Core, which is in the middle. Now, .NET Core is currently in this long-term service mode, where it's not really getting any new love uh, in its own. Everything's transitioning into what we just call .NET, and more specifically, .NET 5. So as you can see here on the screen, .NET 5 is the recommended course to go. And let's just get started by downloading the SDK. You might be asking yourself, Kevin, what's the difference between the SDK and the .NET runtime? Why would I want to select the SDK over the runtime or vice versa? So the SDK stands for Software Development Kit. If you're a developer, you're looking to build .NET applications, the SDK is what you want because all the build tools are there. Everything to run and build .NET applications is included in that package. Now the runtime is only for executing .NET 5 applications. If you're standing up uh, some sort of server for production, the .NET 5 runtime is what you're going to need. So we choose SDK because SDK is, it has everything inside of it. I have the SDK downloaded. We're going to walk through the install now. It's a fairly sh straightforward process. And there you go. The installation was successful. Let's take it for a quick spin. And as just a side note, if you need an editor for writing C Sharp, I highly recommend VS Code if you need a cross-platform solution, or if you just want something that's lightweight, you can also download the Visual Studio 2019 full uh, integrated development environment. I, don't get me wrong, I love full Visual Studio. But for your purposes, Visual Studio Code is probably all that you need. And for any videos I do, I'm really going to try to keep it to Visual Studio Code. To take .NET 5 for some sort of test drive, we want to start at the command line. I'm using Windows Terminal. You can use Command Prompt or PowerShell or any terminal of your choice. I'm in an empty directory as you can see here, and I want to type the command .NET. Uh, .NET is your command line interface for creating, implementing, and building uh, .NET 5 applications. If you run .NET New, you'll be presented with a list of all the types of projects that you can install. These are all templates. So if you want a new web application, you could say ASP.NET Core Web App. If you're interested in Blazor and uh, all that great WebAssembly, you can build a new Blazor server app or a Blazor WebAssembly app. And these templates are designed to just help you get started as quickly as possible. If we scroll up to the top, we're 
going to take .NET 5 for a test drive using just a standard console application. This is an app that runs from the command prompt. So if I say, if I say .NET new console, and we're going to use the dash O to designate what it should be called, and we'll call it test drive. The .NET command line will run through the process, create this new application for us, and it will be available in the folder called test drive. So we'll CD into that. Then we'll open the code inside of VS Code. And this code is pretty straightforward. Uh, you have your standard project main, and it writes hello world out to the screen. Now let's make sure that everything works. So back at our command prompt, we'll type .NET run, and this will be a two-part process. It will automatically build the entire application and then it'll execute. So you can see we have hello world on the screen. Everything's great. So now you can start on your wonderful journey of building .NET applications. So using ASP.NET Core, using Blazor, using any .NET technology that you can think of. This is just the beginning. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you haven't already, hit subscribe below and give this video a thumbs up. I appreciate it so much. I'll see you all next time.